number and someone asked me a question that is what is meaning of threads or a use of threads okay guys look at here in earlier days uh, of a processor is single processor it means it's a single chip single core processor it's a single chip single core processor it is it's a one core processor only so if for a certain purpose like a, you know people start using multiple processors means multiple chips like this to get a um, higher processing rate like a, they want to do a multiple task kind of stuff or a, um, uh, getting a more speed of processing okay. so to handle more traffic okay they use a multiple processes that is more for a server no problem but for a regular users it is difficult so what they done so they take two processors combine them as a single chip with a single shared cache memory this concept called a dual core concept okay so it is a, a one task it is handled by two processors so so multitasking or a, the processing speed increases because of instead of one processor two processors are add up together and become a single chip so okay it's a dual core processor later same people are doing so they instead of uh, increasing number of transistors inside or like that okay so what they done so they divide a single processor into two parts with a separate separate cache memories separate separate cache memories what is this cache memories what are the data uh, in and out it will be loaded data and instructions loaded to this cache memory cache memory to the processors like this this a become a best utilization increases like a they divide one single processor into two parts okay one is core zero like a core one like this is called a core to zero core to zero later so we have a quad core processor scape number of cores four cores processor it is Okay, this is two core processor. This is a four core processor, quad core processor. Means totally four cores are there in a single processor. This is quad core processor. You know, octa core processor, deca core processor means one processor divided into multiple cores. Next one is threading, hyper threading, or logical processors. Number of logical processor. All words are same, guys. That is a, it's a, like a combination of dual core come uh, core to model. It is like a, it is this is means each core again it is double layer like this. It means see it is earlier it is a four core processor. That's it four core four thread type. Now it is four core eight thread processor. Four core, eight thread processor. If you do on this one, two core, four thread processor it is. Means each one is become double layered. Okay, so like this is a processing performance increases, multitask performance also increases with the number of threads. Okay, guys, CPU central processing. Somewhere I will uh, writing uh, things is a cache memory. So cache memory is a very important for our PCUs because of actually uh, CPU speed and cache memory help you to to speed up your processing also. Next one we'll we'll discuss uh, basic points like a primary memory kind of stuff. We'll see. This is a uh, primary memory and secondary memory. Two memory types are there. One is primary memory, another one is a secondary memory.
Nothing, nothing changes. Okay, so. Which is teaching uh, based. Okay. Okay, now it is good, better. Primary memory, secondary memory. Primary memories are RAM and ROM, guys. What is RAM? Random access memory. ROM, read-only memory. Okay. RAM is a volatile memory. ROM is a non-volatile memory. RAM is a volatile memory. ROM is a non-volatile memory. What is meant by volatile? What is meant by volatile memory? Okay, volatile memory means it is a whenever your power is off, data in the device will be gone. Whenever the power is off, the data in the device is gone. Whenever you disconnect or no power connectivity, no power supply to the device, Okay, data will be gone. Pro volatile memory, non-volatile non memory is even your switch off your system or maybe even a power is off, data still remains in the device. That is a non-volatile memory. Guys, again, RAM is a random access memory. And it is read only, ROM is a read only memory. RAM is a volatile memory. ROM is a, it's a kind of permanent memory. So RAM is a temporary, ROM is a permanent memory. RAM is a volatile memory. ROM is a non-volatile memory. RAM, when power is off, oh, sorry, sorry, not RAM guys, volatile memory part. Remember, so that's uh, when power is off, data loss is volatile memory type, okay? So like that. Okay, RAM, random access memory, ROM, read-only memory. RAM is a temporary memory, data stores in RAM temporarily. In a ROM, data is permanent data, it cannot be removed directly. RAM is a volatile memory type, whenever data uh, power is off, data loss. So data still remains in the device, even the power is off. Examples of volatile memories are hard disks, SSDs, uh, uh, pen drives, SD cards. These are all examples of volatile memories. Non-volatile memories, sorry, non-volatile memories, not ROM memories. Okay, so here some people will get a doubt when we are discussed about when you are discussing about a RAM then ROM sizes kind of stuff, okay? So guys, remember RAM is a, RAM, we can, actually RAM, we can change the RAM, we can change RAM, uh, like we can add a RAM, we can remove a RAM, we can replace the, uh, RAM, okay, but ROM is not like that. It is fixed on your motherboard. Okay, it will fix on a, your motherboard. Okay, 
One second, just I'm going to my this whether I have told this part to these people or not. This is one more uh, process. OK, so this is the RAM and ROM differences. First we'll discuss about a RAM, then we'll go to the uh, uh, ROM part. OK, so ROM is your BIOS chip, so that's why. So we'll discuss separately ROM and RAM. Next one is. What is the RAM guys again? RAM is a random access memory also called as a main memory ram and rom are a primary memories but ram is a main memory when you are seeing in a ram related information also it shows memory not those it may not shows ram but may show it is memory so it is main memory your memory ram all are same only okay random access memory also called as a main memory it is a primary memory OK, it is a temporary memory store programs, instructions and data. It is a volatile <coughs> memory. In a RAM, there is a mainly first two basic type of RAMs are there. In a RAM, there is a mainly two type of RAMs. One is SRAM, another one is a DRAM. These SRAMs are used This SRAMs means static RAM is um, cache memory. So we're using as a cache memory, which is built inside of a CPU. So SRAMs are not available like uh, our regular RAMs. So we are not using SRAMs. SRAMs are built inside a CPU. DRAM is a dynamic RAM. It's a DRAM. <laughs> okay. DRAMs having different type of DRAMs are there like a SD RAM, ECC RAM, EDU RAM, V RAM kind of stuff. OK. This DRAM is uh, SD RAM and SD RAM become DDR. OK. DRAM means dynamic RAM. SD RAM means synchronous dynamic RAM. DDR SD RAM means DDR double data rate double data rate <laughs> then ddr ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 ddr5 up to ddr5 it came into market okay currently ddr4 and ddr5 in the market OK, so when you want to buy a RAM, so then what are the things you have to take care? OK, so what are the things you have to see at a RAM when you want to buy or a replace of a RAM also important? OK, so first of all, any RAM having a sizes wise, right? So 4 GB RAM, 8 GB RAM, 16 GB RAM in once upon a time it is 16 GB RAM, 16 MB RAM, 32 MB RAM is also there. Okay, 256 MB RAM also there. Okay, so now we are almost all our RAMs are in a GB sizes only 4 GB, 8 GB, 16 GB, 32 GB RAMs are there. Okay, every RAM has a, a specific clock speed, guys. Okay, that is shows in the usually megahertz speed 13, 33, 1600 megahertz speed. 2400 megahertz speed. Last time I purchased a DDR4 RAM that is 2400, 2366. Okay, 3200 megahertz. Just as some thing like if you see all any of these numbers, you can understand it is a specification. 
DDR3 RAM is there, DDR4 RAM is there, DDR5 RAM is also came into mine. Sir, mine has 3200 megahertz. Yeah, very good. Okay. So here it is, your processor FSB and RAM clock speed must be matches. Okay, must be matches. And you are, when you are buying a RAM, first of all, processor must be compatible with uh, your frequencies. So compulsory go to your processor uh, specifications. Processor specifications, example, so, for example, I want to buy a i5 processor. Uh, some 11th generation, something it is showing here. So, I'm going to Intel website, this processor model. So, this is the processor. So, this is a certain specification. This is a processor model. It contains six cores, 12 threads. <laughs> Okay, six core processor, 12 threads, 4.5 gigahertz processor. It is 12 MB cache memory, 12 MB cache memory. And if you see it is RAM supporting is up to 128 GB. So it depends upon processor, how much it will be support. That is also important. So it is support up to 3200 megahertz frequency. It will support. So I should use my RAM type is 3200 megahertz. Only. Only two RAMs, either 64 plus 64 or one single 128, like that we can able to use it. Okay, it's so a maximum, so depends upon your requirement. The processor is having some integrated graphics, UHD graphics support is there. Okay, next it is support uh, this kind of uh, HDMI resolution, almost like it is 4K resolution, it is supporting. And I said now, so compulsory check. So whether it's 64, 32-bit processor, so it is 64-bit processor anyway, of course. And Intel virtualization technology is also built inside. Okay. So generally, these are the things. So I, my point is, uh, cache memory have seen already, and RAM. So you are using this particular processor means what kind of RAM you have to utilize, how much RAM you have to utilize, you will know it. And also depends upon your motherboard. Okay, and a voltage level of RAM is also important. You want to update or upgrade of your RAM, then what to do guys? Check the CPU model and specification support, size, speed, type of a memory types also find out. Go to the motherboard specifications, number of slots, memory type support. So if it is compatible, we can put it. And uh, voltage levels also there, low level, high level voltage level support. So based on that also, you have to go through your RAM. Guys, you purchasing a very fresh system like a processor RAM and uh, uh, motherboard kind of stuff, it may give you a little confusion. Because uh, everything is the first time, you have to compulsory do all searching and inserting and carefully you have to do it. But if you are already having a system or a laptop or a desktop is there, you want to add more RAM in it, to it, you want to add a additional RAM or you want to replace the existing RAM. Okay, so what to do? Better to check with the old RAMs. You are already one RAM is there, built in RAM is there now. So I'll check with that RAM. What is the RAM? What is the type of model it is? So based on that, you can either replace the RAM or a change the RAM. So it is easy to get a compatibility. Compatibility is sir, also important, right? Yeah, tell me, tell excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Sir, just beside the Intel Core processor, like uh, Intel Core i5, uh, there is written 4200U. What is that 4200U? Which processor, i3 or i5? i5, Intel Core i5 4200U. Add the rate, 1.60. 4200U. 4200U, yes, sir. You represent a low power consumption. Okay, low performance, low power consumption. Sir, means what is this, 4200U? 
it's a kind of fourth generation processor okay 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 every number every model number represents something about a processor okay no, it does not mean it is it is there is a difference you can see it is 4200 it is 4210 both are fourth generations but there will be a difference maybe difference at a number of cores or number of threads wise okay or cache memory wise or clock speed wise okay it's supporting 16 gb ddr3 model it is supporting this type of speed of processor it is okay built in uh, intel uh, hd uh, hd graphics 440 uh, built in uh, memory is there 2 gb graphics okay okay so 64 bit each it each number it represents a generation and model number type so based on this number guys and you will know what is the cp what is the cpu and what is what is this sir and what is written in the second line like uh, 2.6 or 1.6 giga yeah, processor it's a clock speed it's clock a clock speed, speed. A clock speed Okay, sir. Okay. Clock speed means it is so running like this. If this speed of the clock increases, the data traveling from it in the registry is also higher. Okay. This is base speed. The instructions are should be go from one place to another place. But normally we don't discuss inside what are the architecture, right? So, but so data processing. So while it is do processing thing, clock speed will transfer the data, and we are calculating data. All these things based on the clock speed only. And this is the three MB cache memory. Okay, good. Okay. So number of slots on your motherboard, the memory types, and CPU supporting. So just before also one C. Uh, what is this number of? Uh, so this is only 16 GB support, and that too DDR3 model. L means low low level, low voltage. RAM it is supporting like that. We have to verify that both CPU and motherboard compatibility. Then only we can do update, upgrade, or a replace or in setting new RAM capacities. Can I ask one thing? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, what is the use of voltage level? Voltage. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's operating voltage. Like a, a motherboard will decide that one. What type of RAM voltage should be there? Yes. Okay. So based on that only. Okay. Because ah, uh, there is three things: wattage, voltage. Voltage. So, the level voltage will understandable the the data how to uh, send and all. Okay, operating voltage. Okay. Yes, this is how RAM is there. So how people are inserting in this RAM. So this is how RAM is look like, and these are the RAM slots. We insert a RAM into our RAM slots. This is how RAM slots are look like, and uh, how it is. Yes, every RAM has a different packages. So DIP package, SIM package, RIM package, sodium packages, uh, kind of stuff. Okay, just I'm giving this information just to for knowing. Okay, not much requirement, but one point is compulsory requirement. 
so dim. So if you are having a laptop, okay, the laptop is uh, it's a so dim packages. Okay, single inline memory module. Okay, so you can do so dim and so dim. Okay, so. Uh, RAMs are uh, sodium RAMs are little different from DIM RAMs. Sodium RAMs are for laptops. Okay, these are these are all for a laptop. Okay, this is a regular RAM and this is sodium RAM. Okay. This is these are a DDR4, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4 RAM differences. So many let's see them. We can try once. At this time trying one is sodium. This is look like a easy. Okay. Okay. So each RAM guys, each RAM having a number of pins are there and there is a notch. So you want to insert, you want to insert a RAM. You want to insert a RAM in, in a DDR3 RAM slot, you want to put a DDR4, you cannot insert. Okay, so you cannot insert a DDR3 RAM in DDR4 or DDR4 RAM in a DDR3. Okay, so that is a unique uh, setting is there. So again, sodium packages means it is a laptop and mini PCs. DIM packages mostly for a desktop purposes. That's the point I try to say. This is about a static RAM again. Uh, cache memory it is. I'll try. What is the use of this cache memory? Yes, we are uh, thinking. We are thinking. Uh, we are uh, giving as a first time uh, for for uh, uh, the first first we are starting with the block diagram that in. We are giving uh, input to the CPU, CPU process it and get an output. That internal process and traditional block diagram, but it is not that way it is. Guys, this is a CPU. Okay, this is a CPU. CPU, two, two things are there. One, one is ALU and CU, control unit is there in CPU. Okay. This is or my CPU. Okay. Next one is CPU. This is CPU. And I have a different type of devices. Different uh, input output devices are there. Maybe I have a keyboard. Maybe monitor. Maybe a mouse. Or maybe uh, some other devices are can be like this. It is there. Okay, maybe a hard disk. Okay, so maybe I have a keyboard is there. Maybe monitor is there. Maybe I have a monitor is there. Maybe I have a hard disk storage devices, right? Uh, maybe mouse is there. Maybe I connected a printer. Okay, it is also a device, right? Mic is there, speakers are there. So, so many type of IO devices. Input, output devices are there. These devices never, never connect to processor directly. They are not connecting to processor directly. They don't give instructions and data to this processor directly. They're all communicating through a IO controller. 
this i work controller understand what they are speaking okay what is their output input kind of stuff okay so each device recognized based on a irq numbers io addressing kind of stuff this is a io controller okay this is called a io controller just it is small name why this is taking to the mass okay it is a naivo controller this manages each and every device recognized based on the irq numbers io memory addressing kind of stuff okay io memory io addressing is there so this will recognize the devices understand what device what information it is it will understand and it is giving that information or take the information to your ram to your ram okay so it will give it to your ram io controller gather information from io devices give it to your ram okay this is this this is ram okay so what ram will do ram load the data uh, instructions and give it to your cpu inside a cpu there is a cache memory okay this cache memory in a different levels okay this cache memory is in a different levels l1 cache memory l2 cache memory l3 cache memory each memory is instruction and data cache memory is there instruction cache data cache memory is there this cache memory will give this instructions and data to your cpu because of this it speed up the process it speed up the process and make cpu busy okay get a accurate results once processor completed the processing part then it is give it to the cache we load it to the cache memory and uh, and it is loaded to your ram and it is loaded to your ram ram will load to your io controller the io controller will decide where to send this data it is sent to uh, monitor or it has to be sent to your uh, it has to be sent to hard disk like that the processor is there okay guys so you know there is a one thing is there that is called a north bridge so nowadays these north bridge and south bridge kind of stuff not showing is called a north bridge what is a north bridge north bridge will control the communication from cpu to ram only okay north bridge will control the communication between ram and cpu and another one is south bridge this is south bridge will do south bridge will control the communication between ram and other peripherals this communication this side communication will be take care by south bridge 
this side communication will be take care by north bridge and also i said there is a level of catches are there right l1 catchy we have a l2 catchy and l3 catchy these three level of catches okay and uh, in a catchy also there is a instruction catchy and uh, data catchy is also there catches in the instruction catchy and the data catchy So these are the uh, simplest uh, few points. Actually, if I add from there to here, it would be, this is the full diagram of your computer, guys. Okay, so what it is, so you will get an information, you will load information, or you will get an information to your I.O. devices from RAM only. Okay, RAM to cache, cache to CPU. RAM speed and CPU speed will get a mismatching. Okay, there is a mismatched species there. CPU is a very faster than your RAM. So what to do? We using a cache. Cache is as, as fast as your CPU. Cache memory is also a temporary memory only. Okay, so it will faster. It will load in instructions inside as cache memory from RAM to cache, cache to CPU. The, the speed will be matches. So this is why we are using cache memory and this is how we are uh, uh, working in this. And that's a north region, south region. This is a diagram. Here it is get colorful. There is no colorful thing. Guys understand basic points in a RAM, random access memory. Okay, so again, once again, I will tell about RAM guys, random access memory. It is also called a main memory. It is a primary memory. Okay, it is a volatile memory, temporary. Of, uh, it will store data temporarily, means instructions data. It is load uh, from input output devices to it and uh, give it to the processor. Processor process it and give it to your RAM and RAM give it to your I.O. controllers, then it will be distributed to I.O. devices. In a RAM, we have SRAM and DRAM, static RAM and dynamic RAM. SRAM we use as a, as a cache memory, which is built inside of CPU. DRAM is further development to SDRAM. SDRAM is become a DDR, SDRAM, double data rate synchronous dynamic RAM. And this will be is, is developed as a DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, and DDR5. When you see the RAM, RAM generally we discuss in the speed, uh, size matters, right? RAM sizes, RAM speed, RAM models, and uh, voltage levels also important. Depends upon your motherboard to RAM communication, the voltage levels also requirement is there. Next one is you want to add a RAM or replace a RAM uh, or upgrade your RAM. So important is you have to check the CPU compatibility, motherboard compatibility. Based on that, we'll choose the RAM and make sure that it is already you are replacing or adding a new RAM. So it better to match this with the old RAM. That is make more easy to understand. Next one is RAM having different packages. Out of that one, two packages, DIMM and uh, SODIMM packages. For laptops, we use SODIMM package type of RAM, which is look like a smaller DIMM packages. It is a larger one. Okay. Every, every RAM having their own pin configurations. Okay, and notch configuration. So one RAM cannot be fitted to another RAM type of slot. Okay, and there is a cache memory. SRAM is a, as a cache memory. So 
the data from input output devices will be loaded to uh, is is loaded to your ram ram to your cache memory cache memory to, to cpu cache memory is mainly matches to the cpu speed and it quick loading the instructions and data to cpu cpu to cache memory north bridge and south bridge are a, a chipset which is will north bridge will may uh, will control the communication between cpu to ram and south bridge will be control and maintain the communication between ram and other peripherals okay that's the point guys so cpu i said ram i said next one rom will come Chrome is a bigger one. Yeah. I will tell Rom. I will complete how much I can able to complete because these are a small, small points only. It is not a very high end kind of stuff. Because a uh, few other things are there. That is, again, you have to concentrate. More time is required. Yes, understand RAM. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, what sir. is ROM? Read only memory. Random access memory. It is a permanent memory. Okay, it is a kind of primary permanent memory. The chipsets, what are the chipsets we are using? Okay. So whenever the ROM is simple, directly a, a chip. OK, so when, whenever you want a ROM chip for your uh, motherboard or uh, your circuit or uh, your processor related, so you will get a directly uh, instruction, a built in instruction ROM chip, you will get it. OK, so that is a ROM chip. OK. It is a permanent memory. It is directly it is written inside instructions in the ROM chip. But later on days, the organization, those who are building these motherboards and all, they are asking. So we don't want a, a ROM chip, which is you build it. We want a empty chips. Then they build a ROM chips, programmable read-only memory. It means it is a ROM chip. What are the program you want to insert inside? You can put it, but only one time. Once you are inset a program, you cannot erase. A prompt chip, erasable programmable read-only memory. Erasable programmable uh, read-only memory. It means you can erase the program and re that's it. Okay, you can program a empty chip. If you don't like it, you can erase it. That's it. If you don't want it, you can erase it. That's it. You cannot able to rewrite it another rom chip is came that is called a eeprom okay electrically erasable programmable read only memory in this eprom chips are rewritable means you load a program you test it it is not working you can remove it and you can do it or maybe in future you want to use your eprom chip uh, you want to upgrade any instructions inside your eprom chip so you can use this eprom chips Okay. We are using a, a prom chips for a ROM chip purposes. This is basic two points about a ROM chip. Okay, so ROM chips, read-only memory, it's a permanent memory. Okay, so there is instructions in your ROM chip, and we are in using a prom chips, which is a rewritable chip. Okay, unlike RAM guys, like a RAM, unlike RAM guys, RAM is a we can add a RAM, we can remove a RAM, we can insert a RAM. So RAM we can able to change, we can increase the sizes. ROM is not like that. A ROM we don't touch it generally. We don't until unless you got a big problem, then only we will touch the ROM chip. ROM chip is permanently on the motherboard. Okay. So what is the content in this ROM chip? I said uh, instructions or a program inside this ROM chip is there. What is the content in the ROM chip is nothing but a BIOS. Nothing but a BIOS, basic input output system. 
what is a BIOS? BIOS is nothing but a firmware or firmware kind of stuff. What is a ROM contains? It is a contains a program called a BIOS. What is the BIOS? It is nothing but a firmware. Newer version of BIOS is came that is called a UEFI, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Okay. What is this BIOS use? It during your boot up your system, it perform post operations. It recognize hardware devices and locate and load of operating system. It helps uh, operating system to access the hardware devices. You know, when you start your PC, means when you press the power button, When you press the power button, okay. When you press the power button, um, uh, your system has to be started, right? So system has to be um, booted. System has to be booted. Who will helping to boot this system? Your buyer chip on the how, why? giving one by one instruction when you power on your system post will happen means power on self test so when you power on your system system test itself system test itself all the devices mainly major devices connected devices are working or not and second step the this bio shape contains information of your motherboard but devices connected to your motherboard devices are connected to your motherboard okay devices are connected to your motherboard so all the device those information means cpu information ram information hard disk information cd ram information as is the information it gathers all the hardware it will recognize the hardware devices, gather their information stored in the BIOS chip. Okay. And also, this BIOS chip also will help you to locate and load operating system. It will tell you how to locate an operating system device and how to load operating system that also get by your BIOS only. It helps operating system to recognize hardware devices because in BIOS chip already it contains the hardware device information. It will tell to operating system these are the devices are in the um, machine. Okay. Guys, it is what is our ROM chip? Read only memory, permanent memory. It is we are discussed, but ROM chip contains a program. That's why we never call ROM chip as a ROM chip. We call it as a BIOS chip only. Okay, what is this BIOS? BIOS is nothing but a firmware. It is a kind of program which helps our system to boot up. Okay, it perform post operation. It can recognize hardware devices. It uh, uh, gather the hardware uh, in device information. It also help uh, to locate the operating system and load operating system. It helps the operating system to access hardware devices the bios newer version is that is a uefi a unified extensible firmware interface different bios manufacturers are there so like a me bios edward bios phonix bios dell bios lenovo bios okay different manufacturers of bios manufacturers are available in market okay guys this is a, a small part of a, a, what we can say boot processing part so now i'm not going to boot processing part okay i'm going to boot bios settings part this bios yes our system the bios not only uh, just a chipset okay also we can manage certain things in the BIOS. Certain things in the BIOS. 
by going to their BIOS settings. You can see here it is. You can go to the BIOS settings in a different ways. I told only the one way only. There's a different ways to go to BIOS setting is there. So first the simplest way is, is like a, when you start your PC, on your PC screen, it will show what is your BIOS key. If you don't know the BIOS key, you can get it from there or such in a Google app based on your computer uh, device configuration or maybe company names, you'll find it. So find out what is your BIOS key and you can go to BIOS setup or a BIOS settings. So how to go to BIOS setting, start your PC, power on your PC and kept press the press the BIOS key so then you will go to BIOS settings. So in the BIOS settings you can see date and time you can change date and time you can set a passwords to your BIOS you can set a BIOS passwords you can set a BIOS password so then no others will come to your BIOS settings to change your configuration. What is this BIOS settings contains? It contains your date and time, your system configurations, okay, and your um, uh, system hardware configuration. Configuration means uh, device configurations, hardware device configurations. We can see from here and we can change it according to uh, as per our requirement. We can enable and disable certain hardware features. OK, we can change the boot priority in the BIOS settings. Guys, what is the use of going to BIOS settings? You want to change the date and time or you want to set a password or you want to change the uh, hardware features. OK, hardware settings or hardware features you want to change it or maybe you want to change the boot priority or, uh, or you want to see only system configuration, enable or disabling devices, okay? So then we can do it in the BIOS settings. So here it is. This is the screen. So if you see here it is, this is a system when power is on, you can see F2 setup means if you when system is on, you press F2, it will lead it to you by your settings. Okay, it will go into, it will show you to the BIOS settings. I got this uh, old one. So, this is one another screen, guys. So you can, so these are only screens I'm sharing. If you look at this, you can understand. So date and time. I went to a, some system by your settings. You can see date and time. You can see here it is C CPU type. CPU i7 4500U. 4500, 4th generation i7 processor it is. 1.8 GHz clock speed it is showing. And fixed hard disk, 1 terabyte of fixed hard disk it is there. And SATA, SATA um, DVD writer is installed. DVD writer is there and 8 GB RAM, DDR3 uh, RAM, 8 GB RAM, 1600 megahertz, RAM speed is 1600 megahertz means it's a DDR3 RAM. See this, I can get a system configuration, date and time. I can change the date and time also if I required. And how I got this information by going to BIOS setting. How my BIOS knows because BIOS when power is on, automatically BIOS will gather this information. It recognize the hardware devices. OK, guys, this is. This is some other uh, uh, settings. 
OK, both are different uh, BIOS manufacturers. This is a Phonics BIOS. So I went to the advanced settings. You can see virtualization technology is enabled. Processor power management is disabled. Core multiprocessing enabled. Mismatch detection enabled like this. You can enable or disable or do certain settings for your processor or maybe some hardware devices. So here I enable this virtualization technology at a this level. This is a password setting. So I will change. I will make it much smaller because it is uh, taking too much space. My screen. Okay. So when I go to the bio setting, so this is the first screen. Advance. This is security. Security means I'm up. I'm giving a password for user password. So provisory password. Someone want to access my Someone want to access uh, my um, what we can say. Uh, your mind is not working. Uh, want to change my uh, password, uh, password kind of stuff. So what to do? OK, what to do? So when we are uh, someone, I change some settings someone and try to change my uh, settings. So they must know the password to see the settings or uh, change the settings. Then only they can do it. So that is the this user password kind of stuff. OK. Next one is uh, the one more is there that is called a boot option. OK, this is the boot option guys. What is this? It's a boot priority. OK, it is a, our boot priority. What is the boot priority? When you start your PC, system is started. System is started. OK, but from which device having an operating system from which device by priority wise how to load it? OK, I have a operating system in hard disk. I have an operating system in a pen drive. Now I started my PC, but as per this list first system try to search OS in the CD-ROM. If CD-ROM contains an operating system DVD or a CD, it will load it from there. And then it will search from a operating system from removal device means pen drive. If my pen drive having an operating system, it will load operating system from it. If it is not there, then it will search an operating system from hard, hard disk. OK, if hard disk contains an operating system, definitely it will load it. Hard disk does not contain operating system. It will search in the network. If network, any WDS server or a network boot systems are there, then it will load operating system from it. Otherwise, it keeps searching where is an operating system. It, otherwise, it will throw an error. Portable device not found. OK, portable device not found. Again, I'm telling guys it is a boot priority. This boot priority also can be changeable. For example, my hard disk contain operating system. My boot priority is hard disk is first. For example, I start my PC. It is such operating system from hard disk. It is there. Load operating system. That's it. It never such remaining things. For example, hard disk does not contain operating system. Then it will search the next device. That is a boot priority. These are the main things we have to check in the um, BIOS settings. Guys, this is a CMOS battery. CMOS battery, the name is CMOS battery. Lot of people confuse with this CMOS battery part. OK, what is this CMOS battery? Uh, have even I there is some misinformation. 
So I removed that part also from here. What is this CMOS battery? Guys, normally BIOS having data, right? BIOS contains a BIOS chip contains a data. Information is there. What is that information? Motherboard, uh, mother, on motherboard chipset details are there. And it contains, okay? Okay. Okay. So there is a in bio chip. There is some permanent uh, instructions and data is there, but few things: hardware recognition related details, date and time, the passwords, the passwords settings are temporary permanent data is permanent but there is a bios temporary data here. what are there date and time bios passwords bios settings or configurations are temporary i'll put it this that's thing there is a temporary data which is It is a temporary data in BIOS. Oh, what happened? In BIOS chip. <laughs> this is different. This is different. Huh? Okay. So there is a temporary data in the BIOS chip. What is it? Date and time. BIOS passwords, BIOS settings, and a configuration. These are the temporary thing. When system is off, data loss. What data? This data is loss. To keep the data and to to keep the data and to run the date and time. To keep the data and uh, run date and time. BIOS CMOS battery. What CMOS battery will do? CMOS battery, uh, which powers the this memory is called a CMOS battery. Something is there. Okay. We use CMOS battery. CMOS battery is CMOS battery. Use power supply. Apply to our BIOS chip. Okay, this CMOS battery actually made up of lithium battery. What is CMOS battery? It is a lithium battery, guys. Three volts lithium battery. Lot of people adding this CMOS as a something differently, but no, no, no. Something is not different here. It is. This is we cannot touch it via uh, it is reversible changes, editing, editing, suggesting, editing, viewing. I'm editing. Okay, CMOS is a battery. No, guys, CMOS is a technology. CMOS is a technology to build a integrated circuit means chipsets. Okay, also known as a chips or a microchips. We are building using CMOS technology. CMOS is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor. It is it's a combination of it is a combination of NMOS and PMOS. It is become a CMOS. It is a transistor, metal oxide semiconductor field effect to transistor. Guys, whenever people are asking what is CMOS, don't say it is a battery or it is a 
anything. Okay, CMOS is a technology used to build CMOS chips like a ICs, chips, microchips, microprocessors, microprocessors, microcontrollers. These are all built with the CMOS technology. Okay, the battery actually it is a lithium battery and it is a three volts battery. This is the battery how it is look like. CMOS never stores anything. OK, some people even this previous PPT, previous some line is there. So after I told then someone pointed I have mistaken in my PPT like just our student only it is. So immediately I changed it. OK, so this is what I am trying to see. That is also not at all good. OK. What is this CMOS battery, guys? It is a 3 volts lithium battery. Actually, it is giving a power supply. Actually, it is giving power supply to your BIOS chip. Your BIOS chip. OK, BIOS is actually manufactured with a CMOS technology. That's why it is CMOS. So this is your BIOS chip. It's your ROM chip. This is made by CMOS technology only. And this is our CMOS battery, which is lithium battery. Three volts. DC battery, of course. Okay. What it is doing? Giving a power supply to your CMOS chip continuously. So then the data inside will be continuously safe. It's not going to any. No, 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 why it is go to this point. This is, you know. Like this. This CMOS battery giving this one. So, so this is a made up of CMOS technology. This is actually lithium battery. If you remove this CMOS battery, what happened is this is not okay. If you remove this CMOS battery, the settings goes to factory defaults. If you remove this CMOS battery, the settings go to factory default. So don't remove that one. And you will get this kind of error, guys. At least, if you got this error, then someone removed and inserted your CMOS battery. Someone removed and inserted CMOS battery. Okay, what is this error? CMOS checksum error. CMOS checksum error means someone removed and reinsert your battery. Next one is you you got this error first time and you went to bio settings. You've done the change of settings. Then what to do? She must check some error. So you are getting this error every day, even though every time means next time also you change your settings, bio settings, everything is changed. OK, today and tomorrow also after shutdown again, tomorrow you restarted. So you started your PC every time you are getting this kind of error. So what to do? 
is a time for change. Yes, you must battery change your CMOS battery. Go to market, ask for a CMOS battery, change your CMOS battery. It is the cost is around 10 to 20 rupees. Okay, some people want to steal your money, they are telling 50 rupees. Of course, maximum people are there. Okay. Guys, this is up to your CMOS. Guys, understand at least uh, something points about your ROM chip. Okay. Did you expect anything about a ROM chip having so many things? Okay. So no one is speaking. I'm feeling very bored, guys. Yes, sir. Just two more small points are there. One is a motherboard. Another one is a. Hello. Is a, yeah, tell me, tell me. So does interviewer uh, goes this much deep questions? Uh, maybe may not be. CMOS is a common question. Very good. CMOS is a common question, right? CMOS. CMOS battery. This are a common question. Okay, what is CMOS battery? What is CMOS? CMOS is not battery. Okay, CMOS battery is lithium battery. CMOS battery is lithium battery. CMOS is not a battery. It is a technology mm -hmm. to build a chipset. Chips or microprocessor, microprocessor, like a CPU, RAM, ROM, all these things by CMOS technology only. And uh, next one. About BIOS, okay. What is a BIOS or UEFI? Okay, and few more things to understand. You must know what is BIOS and UEFI. What is BIOS and what is firmware? And uh, what is BIOS settings? Um, what are the possible things are there? Um, BIOS settings, BIOS, what is BIOS? And uh, what are the in the topic today, guys? And what is RAM and ROM and difference between RAM and ROM? Can we change the ROM? No, we don't change the ROM. Can we can change RAM, but we can't. We don't change the ROM. We can change the ROM, but we, we cannot. We don't change it. Okay. If only if it is compulsory required, chip level, we can do it. But it is not like a go and uh, remove and replace new one. It is not happening like that. There is a lot of processing. So, okay, sometimes it is difficult also, very difficult. Also. Okay, RAM and ROM differences, ROM, BIOS, UEFI, CMOS, CMOS battery, BIOS settings, also an important part. Um, yes. Next CPU, what is CPU? What is cache memory? Uh, because we are already done. So the, what is cache memory? And again, what is a RAM? What is North Bridge and what is South Bridge? Okay. How to check about what is CPU, about RAM? Of course, you can go to Task Manager. There you can find about your CPU information and your RAM information. Okay. Knowing is better, guys. No one knows what they will ask. Uh, small, small points are there, guys. First one is motherboard. Second one is SMPS. Both I will tell and we'll close for today. OK. And next is tomorrow. No class, guys. Tomorrow uh, here we have a festival in a therapy festival is there. So I don't know about you, so we don't have a film. OK, so for yes. us it is holiday. Whether we do first or not. So sir, we so, have okay. class on Monday. Yeah, again class on Monday only. Afternoon, same time.
it is a main circuit board what is a motherboard guys it is a main circuit board um, so yeah you got three days of time guys so better to concentrate both the things prepare both the technical means um, um, networking related and service desk related both the things are completed please go through it okay so monday you can go through this hardware part but two days at least go through this two parts okay both networking and service desk and already service desk other video material also is sent please check it if anything you need i will send it second one uh, uh, another one is so of course we you have your english classes are there i think so because it's operating yes. from noida okay so we can take the class and uh, you got uh, three days of time so concentrate on both the things prepare well okay so i will complete these two things only one one is motherboard another one is SMPS, both are small, small things only. Next one is hard disk. Hard disk having a importance is there, like a hard disk, partitions, file systems. That I will tell once it is completed, then I will tell a boot processing and troubleshooting at a boot processing. To understand boot processing, troubleshooting at a boot processing, okay, issues at a boot processing time, we should understand this components also. That's what I'm telling. Okay, what is the motherboard, main circuit board? Control all physical devices, components are connected directly or indirectly. Okay, sir. Yeah, tell me. Uh, sir, I had a question that uh, when would be the interview? Can you tell the probably what would be the date? Uh, I don't know. So, madam will tell you when is the version test. Okay, so I don't know exactly when is your version test. Most probably uh, 20th. 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 The next day would be interview. No, no, no. So once uh, uh, this version test, maybe Friday, Saturday version test completed. So okay. you will get scheduled. That is will be known by you only. I don't know when it is. Mostly either uh, one uh, in, in the next day or like that only. That's oh. it. You have a time. So prepare at least these things first. OK, sir. OK, thank most, you. I, I, I don't know exactly, but mostly so how many days after version test the technical one will be held. What it is after how many days of uh, version test the technical test will be held. Recently, I didn't get that information, guys. Sorry for that one, because earlier days uh, earlier, I have seen some batches. There are uh, means few two, three day batches before a uh, I got that information. So one hour you're done today or test, either tomorrow or day after tomorrow is a technical interview. But recent batches, I don't know because of uh, once you are completed version test, all are shifted to different uh, group. So we are not giving that. Uh, we are not getting that communication. OK. OK, sir. OK, but so be prepared. You. So mostly it is a one or two days within the one or two days only. When you get a chance, guys, even if you got half an hour also, no problem. Prepare some technical questions and answers kind of stuff. Okay. okay. I will give you some. Meanwhile, I will give you one or two videos, which is I have discussed with the previous batches. Try to go through that to know how questions and how answers you have to tell, like how to prepare and all. Okay. Thank you. One second. Hello, sir. Yeah, tell me, tell me. So, uh, so what is the register? What is? Register, register. Registry or a register? Register, sir. Where it is located here, anything is there? Sir, it is between the uh, CPU and cache memory. No, so don't go to that part, OK? OK. If I told then people will uh, will will get angry on you and me. 
ओके ओके सर द स्टोरी कम्स फ्रॉम द फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स फ्लिप फ्लॉप रजिस्टर एंड देन ई रजिस्टर इज अ सिंपल गाइस वेरी टू अंडरस्टैंड रजिस्टर इज नथिंग बट अ 1 बिट मेमोरी स्टोरेज 1 बिट मेमोरी स्टोरेज इन सीपीयू रैम वी हैव अ billions of bits are there to store data okay like this this is the register can store one bit data so there is a several uh, registers are there to store the data in a both cpu and ram and uh, uh, all these things okay so you ask for a clock also right what is this clock kind of stuff whenever the yes. clock runs data can be moved from one register to another register to reach to a certain locations like this the data movements happens from in the registry if clock runs okay so now don't we don't want jandu bombs okay amrutanjan place <laughs> right cpu ram hard disk expansion cards everything is directly connected to your motherboard only and your motherboard contains so many connectors cpu sockets are there memory slots are there io connectors are also there okay so there is a so many uh, kind of uh, connectors are there. okay so components on motherboard cpu slots sockets memory slots expansion slots io slot there is on motherboard chipsets idr sata connectors floppy disk drive connectors cmos battery connectors power supply connector heat sinks and front panel connectors are there so this is the old and traditional uh, uh, motherboard still i am using that one to explain this one get here guys this is see this is a old motherboard so uh, this is the cpu socket ram slots this is ram slot you know uh, this white one this one is um, power supply power supply connector from smps north bridge south bridge graphic card this is a graphic card this is pca slots for a additional uh, uh, cards purpose this is a back panel back panel connectors we are using okay um hard disk connectors cmos batteries so some other power supply distributors okay lan port is there serial port parallel port vga port uh, usb connectors keyboard mouse ps by 2 connectors also there okay so these are the different connectors we are getting now this world the ram slots we we are already know how the ram slots look like how ram slots sitting so that is another picture so okay so how rams should be inserted like this already uh, in the ram slot this is the back panel connector guys so when you are connecting it is a regular system if you are connecting this is a back panel connection you can see there is a ps by 2 connectors serial port parallel port nowadays we are not getting so many other uh, connectivities so this serial port this serial port or a com port or a parallel port we are uh, missing nowadays so we are getting vga port and hdmi port usb ports lan port and uh, this connectors are there com port serial port rs232 all names are same okay this is a back panel connectors their names and their details so you can try okay so most of the people are um, you know not even a laptop details also people don't know that's the problem problem is it's not your qualification not your background okay 
it is about a even lot of people from even a, from a csc background people also most of the people don't know the basic hardware components not even a laptop or mobile they said maybe we are using mobile even mobile also they don't that is the saddest thing to our uh, <laughs> part so no problem Okay, this is a PS by two guys. So um, we can connect a PS by two keyboard and mouse. It is earlier days in the olden days we use this PS by two keyboard and mouse. And the recent motherboards also coming with this kind of stuff. You know, so they stop uh, uh, giving this uh, PS by two uh, connectivities. Uh, in the middle of years, but now a recent motherboards also started to give this um, 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 uh, type of connectors. Okay, now we are everything is USB, right? But still, um, new motherboards started at least one uh, PS by two to uh, for a keyboard and mouse connectivity. This is VGA. Video graphic array. It is a 15 pin connector to connect your monitor or a projectors. Okay. VGA port connector is there. This is serial port, serial port, parallel port. Two type of ports are there, guys. So, serial port are a parallel port that is. To connect like a this serial port also called as a COM port or RS-232 port. Why it is? Because earlier days they will connect uh, uh, external modems to this COM port only. So that time this LAN port kind of com communications are very less. If you want internet, you need to connect it to serial port. Serial port is also a communication port uh, means to connect other devices. Also they use a serial port. Now we are getting this LAN port, Ethernet port, okay, to connect a power LAN. Okay, so these are the different ports, back panel connectors are there on a motherboard. So this is so nowadays we are getting a different motherboard, okay, and these are the back panel of different motherboards. See, this is I am getting a PS by two as well as. VGA, SDMI, no serial port, no parallel port. Uh, USB is there and USB. Blue USB means 3.2, 3 point. USB 3. Black one or white one means uh, USB, uh, it's a one, uh, two, two. USB version 2, USB version 3. This LAN port and this is audio V connector. Okay, the next one is guys SMPS switch mode power supply. Okay, switch mode power supply. What is SMPS? Um, we are uh, getting a power supply to our wall socket that is a 220 volts. Okay, that is a 220 volts only. Okay. This 220 volts AC power supply we are getting from outside to inside. Then what happened? That is not suitable for our electronic devices. That to our mobile phones, computers, we don't use uh, that kind of energy. Okay. So we need a SMPS to convert AC to DC power supply. We have to convert that AC power supply to DC power supply. And uh, not only one AC power supply, right? Is it not not only one uh, single AC kind of stuff power supply, multiple uh, DC power supplies we required and to to supply different devices. OK, see it is. It is a SMPS. SMPS is getting a different connectors. This is a main connector going to motherboard. This is four plus four or four plus 
only for or four plus four or four plus two, like a six pin connector for a CPU connector. Flappy, if you have a flappy drive, it is nowadays not there, but it is flappy related power supply. SATA hard disk is there, SATA hard disk or SATA DVD drive is there. This is the power supply connector for a directly hard disk. That is DVD. DVD. This is for a old hard disk type, Molex connector type. A connectors are there, okay? Pata hard disk or Pata CD RAM. This is the power supply. This is additional power supply. Uh, it is can be go to your PSC. This is optional for depends upon your uh, this connectors. Okay. Yeah, we can make it as a smaller, but it is look good to understand what are the different type of connectors. This also picture is we can useful for uh, our understanding how it is there but it is very bigger. OK, this is so another look. It is a 24 pin ATX power connector. This is six pin uh, motherboard direct, uh, connector it is there. This is also four pin connector, Molex connector, and it is a SATA power supply connector. So yeah, this is the last one. Okay. So already I told what is the use of a, uh, SMPS. SMPS actually converts AC power supply to DC power supply. Okay. Our main power supply is 220 volts AC power supply, right? It is a sine wave for our electronic device. We need a DC power supply like you are using a battery for your mobile. So that is a DC power supply to recharge your mobile. That is the charger is there now. The charger converts AC to DC and give the power supply to DC. This is a, a certain information, guys. This is actually going to your motherboard uh, uh, from SMPS uh, device. Okay, so the wires are in a different colors. The each color, uh, the representation for a, a different voltage levels. Okay, and uh, SMPS you want to buy that is comes under okay different wattages also compulsory you have to verify what wattage of SMPS I have to use it you have to calculate a wattage consumption inside and you have to uh, buy a, your SMPS so compulsory take the SMPS based on your hardware configuration okay based on a hardware configuration. OK, so today we completed about a CPU and the RAM. And ROM yes. BIOS. Motherboard and SMPS, right? So, what is this wattage, guys, for SMPS? Inside your CPU, your RAM, your motherboard, your hard disk, your CD RAM, your graphics card, your sound card, totally you have to calculate how much power consumption it is required. Based on that, you have to buy SMPS with a particular wattage limit. Do not take bigger and a very smaller also. Little bigger is better, means total consumption is 400. You can take 450 or 500 wattage uh, uh, SMPS is good. Not a narrowly also, equal length is not good. I think one of the picture is enough, uh, no. right? So it is.
Okay, so different connectors and uh, some PS. Okay, so that's a uh, point, guys. But next one, if you have a chance, already I shared this link to you. Uh, I think so. I shared this hardware PPT or not, right? The hardware PPT. This is a hardware PPT, okay, uh, which is um, better go through once and if you want uh, meantime any other things also. But this point, this from this one onwards, little confusion guys, because so I only I know how to change. This is next day, tomorrow we'll discuss, not to tomorrow, Monday we'll going to discuss different uh, secondary storage devices and what is hard disk, what is SATA, PATA interfaces? Okay, what is 3.2? Sorry, 3.5, 2.5 uh, a disk. What is external hard disk? What is ZPT? What is uh, ZPT? What is MBR? Okay, what is partitioning? How to create a partitions? That is also will tell you. What is uh, SSD? Difference between hard disk and SSD? Different type of SSDs. What is file system? that we will discuss once we have done that one guys we have a time then again same day only we'll try to i will try to finish this um, um, uh, boot processing okay so that's we'll try that's it for today guys okay so these things we will discuss on a next month Thank okay, you, sir. Sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Happy Pongal, sir. Thank you.